Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for the introduction and for the invitation. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I, love, um, I love being able to share about OpenScapes and how we support kinder science for future us. So OpenScapes is a approach in a community that I founded um, as a Mozilla Fellow in 2018 and have built together with my partner, Aaron Robinson, and our growing community. And we champion open data science. So we think of this as the tooling and the people enabling reproducible, transparent, and inclusive practices for data intensive science. And um, so we're really motivated by this question. What if we connected our skills and our values as a daily practice in our daily work for climate, for climate solutions, for climate justice? And I know in talking with a lot of you here today and through many of the amazing talks this morning, there's a lot of interest in what we can do around climate change that's beyond changing light bulbs in our house. What can we do in it as, a daily, as a daily practice? And so what we've learned through OpenScapes is seeing that data science and open science combined with mentorship and teamwork and community is a huge part of this effort. And this quote, um, says to address our climate emergency, we must rapidly and radically reshape society. We need every solution and every solver. This is by Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson and Catherine Wilkinson and their book, All We Can Save. And this motivates us in, in so many ways. We work primarily with environmental and earth scientists um, and thinking about the interface of the communities that folks work with and how we can leverage mentorship and teamwork and community. Before I share these stories about OpenScapes, I wanted to give a little bit more background about what marine scientists do. I'm often asked why we're needing data science or how we're involved in the climate movement. So this is me um, doing my PhD research at Stanford uh, about 15 years ago now. Um, this is me holding a squid as big as I am. I'm, off a sh I'm on a boat off the coast of California, and we're releasing this squid back into the ocean alive with an electronic tag on it. And this tag turns this squid into a little oceanographer. It's collecting data every second as it swims through the ocean, learning about its movement and its habitat. But it's also, at that resolution, you're also able to see this animal breathe because uh, of jet propulsion and that movement and breathing are combined with this animal. It's amazing, it's just beautiful. And I, my data that I used for my PhD combined, was from squids, from satellites, from submarines. It was just this amazing ability to study this ecosystem and think about how this animal that is in this ecosystem is super important globally um, for food security. We eat a lot of calamari globally, so do a lot of other fish and, research, and other animals in the ocean that depend on that. Um, and as oceans warm and food, you know, different fish move around, squid also move around. And so thinking about how this animal is, is interacting with its environment is, a, is part of the climate movement and climate solutions. So this is super exciting. I am out at sea doing all this research, but when I actually got to hold that data in my hand that had traveled with a squid, it felt like this. It felt awful. The most demoralizing, lonely feeling. Um, and I didn't have big data necessarily, as you might think about it, but it was big data to me. It was bigger than the skill sets that I had. But luckily, I had amazing mentors that, that met me where I was, taught me how to code, and let me see that I could not only answer my current questions, but I could think bigger than my, my previous way of thinking. I remember the first time I realized I could, I could run an analysis 100 times as easily as I could run it twice because I knew what a for loop was. That was a completely new way of thinking in marine science for me. But it wasn't just about coding. It was about open science and community. It was about teamwork. So when I finished my PhD and went to UC Santa Barbara and worked with my team, I also was introduced to open source and through the R community. Our ladies, with Gabriela de, de Quiros, who spoke earlier, has been transformative to, to me, welcoming me and creating this identity that I had as a data scientist, and many other amazing communities as well. So I was able to rethink the way I thought about science. However, whether you're feeling like Luke Skywalker or like a sad, cute animal, 
the, this problem is real. Um, scientists of, in a lot of different fields are not formally trained in data science or computing or software. And so this comes to this question about who is included in data science. Um, and, who, and when are folks supported to learn? And when we think about how science can be quite exclusionary, potentially for, in fa different facets for women, how this can be compounded when data science is involved as well. So this is a big motivator for Openscapes. Openscapes is, is really helping shift the culture from that sad, lonely feeling to help researchers explore this beautiful landscape that is open science and data science, the communities and tooling and data that are available. There are many existing paths forward in open science. And what we try to do with Openscapes is to welcome folks at the trailhead and find out where they are, help them establish where they are, who's around them, and that they can safely navigate existing paths forward with their team. And they're able to then contribute to new paths forward and, and be a part of this amazing ecosystem. So we've worked now with over 150 teams through our flagship program called the Champions Program. These are professional research teams from NASA and from NOAA Fisheries and from the Environmental Protection Agency. They're also from academia and nonprofits. And the way we do this is with uh, what we call the Openscapes flywheel. So what we do, starting in the top left, is that we engage a future us mindset. We welcome folks to this space and, and create a, a place for them to ask questions and to get to know what's available. We ex introduce existing software and examples relevant to their research. Then we empower a learning culture. We invest in learning and trust, and we work openly together. This is in Google Docs, this is on GitHub. This is investing in a culture of psychological safety where we're, where we're safe to be vulnerable and say what we don't know and to help each other. And then we amplify open leaders. We leverage common existing tooling and workflows and skills and data, and, and we reuse that and iterate on it and extend it, and we inspire others to come. So this is really thinking about culture change in this flywheel. This is the flywheel concept was introduced by Jim Collins, who's thinking about when you're building things to last, it's not about one single thing, it's about relentlessly uh, trying to move a big heavy flywheel and doing something cyclical many times and gathering momentum and including more people and having other folks join this movement. So it, this kind of culture shift is really about technology and people. And you'll see that in these two examples that I'll show now. The first is an example of folks that first came to us with, with Openscapes as learners and became leaders. So these two amazing women, Ileana Fenwick and Eli Holmes, are both marine scientists and they are both data scientists. They're both in different parts of their careers. Ileana is a, is an, a third year PhD student and uh, Eli Holmes has been at NOAA Fisheries for over 20 years. Through our program, both of them saw what they needed to see in order to take their next steps in their, in their data science journeys. For Ileana, that was learning that she could not only code in R, but code collaboratively, reuse other people's code, meet the people that wrote those R packages with fisheries, and talk to them and build relationships and get help. Um, she learned how to use GitHub for version control, and also learned to, to um, meet other folks. And, and during COVID, this, it was a really lonely time, and onboarding to a new lab during COVID became less lonely through this program. With Eli Holmes, they, she's on a collab, many collaborative teams creating annual re government reports around fisheries. And something that she took um, from Openscapes was about secession planning. When folks retire from her team, how do you reduce the amount of information that's lost? She's a longtime coder and GitHub user for version control, but she learned to use GitHub for project management um, and shared project management through GitHub issues and, proje uh, and projects. And she also has leveled up the whole game at NOAA Fisheries using Quarto for collaborative reports, which lets you combine Jupyter Notebooks, R Markdown um, uh, Notebooks, and, and create really beautiful reports. So now, as 
as learners then, they became leaders within their own spaces. Ileana has just launched the Pathways to Open Science program, which is a remote event series for black environmental and marine researchers in partnership with black and marine science and black women in ecology, evolution, and marine biology. And Eli Holmes has been helping lead over 10 different OpenScapes trainings throughout NOAA Fisheries, as well as spearheading cross-center collaboration and open science policy. And you can see that open documentation is a big part of this culture change and, and sharing. These are both examples of online books made with Quarto. The second example is with NASA. And it's been amazing to see so many Na NASA data examples so far um, at WIDS. Um, we work with a mentor community across the NASA Earth Science Data Centers. So as, you've, as you saw in Priya's talk just previous, NASA collects a lot of data about the Earth as well, and that's used in climate change research. And so what we're doing with NASA is helping this mentor community support researchers as they migrate their analytical workflows to the cloud. And that is following how NASA Earth data is now migrating to the cloud, so researchers won't be downloading uh, gigabytes or terabytes of data. They'll be able to take their compute to the cloud. And this is just an amazing community of user support staff, engineers, ecologists, um, a whole swath of amazing folks who really have this mindset of anyone I interact with, I want to help feel hopeful and valued and seen. I want to help people spiral up hope. And an example of what they have been creating together to support researchers is just phenomenal. They, we've, we have a Jupyter Hub managed by 2i2c, and their researchers can bring their code in Python or R or MATLAB and have a place where they can start to figure out what these analytical workflows look like. They lead learning events and tutorials. They share lessons learned. They're also building Python libraries and cheat sheets and guides where they see the, the cracks or opportunities to support researchers even further. So this is just an amazing example of this community that kind of came to OpenScapes as, as uh, leaders and then have become learners together because we had to learn all this tech ourselves as well. Um, learning how to use a Jupyter Hub and manage it and think about administration, think about facilitating workshops, thinking about how to do code review together, but also tutorial review, thinking about how to give and receive feedback as teachers. It's been an amazing collaboration and, and is ongoing. So what, what this is all about is about movement building and thinking about what's possible because all of this. First of all, there's more time for researchers on their science and on solutions if they're not spending time in those daily shuffling of hand versioning files from email or whatnot. So it, but it's not just about time saved, it's about better products, it's about reproducibility, it's about less time loss day to day as you onboard yourself to projects, but also less loss during secession. It's about improved morale and it's about climate change and social change, and that's really the end goal. This is about connecting our biggest challenges with our daily work. So I wanna use my last 40 seconds to talk about how you all, how we all can develop a kinder data science mindset. So mentorship is a skill, just like any other technical skill. This is something we can all develop. This is something you can learn and bring to your work and join existing efforts. These are a handful of the things that inspire us and that we bring into our work, the, the books, the people, the communities, and it really starts with generosity and empathy. It, it includes asking questions and then learning how to listen not only to give a solution, but to listen, to understand, and really not make assumptions about what, where folks are starting from. So I'll thank you all there. There's more resources and links throughout, um, and we welcome you to reuse and extend and join us. Thank you.